What's up guys, welcome to Vintage Genetics, where it is all about classic bodybuilding. And classic bodybuilding we will represent here in Alicante, because I'm in Alicante, Spain, right now for European Pro, which are competing at tomorrow. So I've already done a lot of loading, we've already arrived here, we've done the trip, but I still want to show you exactly what happened. So of course, we had to prepare ourselves at home, pack the suitcases for Alicante, and this right here is of course go. me getting ready in the morning of the flight with our beautiful children still being there, which I'm missing a lot right now. And here I was having my, uh, my breakfast, first having all the supplements of course, getting in all the omega-3s, the magnesium, micronutrients, and then making my victory breakfast, which I like to call it that way, to be a victor in everything you do. Of course, just the cream of rice, which I always show, and designer way on top, packing my meals, and now we're driving off to the airport, where we are going to be driving, and I mean flying, to Alicante, which, uh, you know, the flight is pretty short, two and a half hours, a little bit uncomfortable with the legs, and uh, <laughs> this peanut butter is a quite an interesting story, which you still might see happening, but uh, it squished all over myself and another passenger. Then we're arriving in Alicante Airport, getting our rental car, a Jeep Renegade, my girlfriend Marley trying to pack in all the suitcases, but it fits perfectly, and now we are on our way to the apartment where we will be staying. And uh, yeah, Marty is always criticizing my driving style. That had to be in a video, of course. But uh, the apartment that I chose, I always like to have things I have at home as well, just like an own car. That's why I have a, our own rental car, so we can drive everywhere, whatever we want. I don't like to take taxis or Ubers. And then we arrived in the, uh, in the apartment, where of course we have a kitchen, a fridge, a microwave, lots of space, lots of bedrooms, and right when we arrived, I had to take my beautiful meal, which I prepared, and it was only chicken, cucumber, and a bit of peanut butter, and some rice cakes. One common theme here is very low fiber. The cucumber only contains, yeah, here you can actually see that <laughs> the peanut butter is squishing out. Sorry, passenger, didn't mean to do that. But yeah, we were having a low fiber day, and that was the day before the weigh-ins, to allow myself to actually weigh a kilo lighter than um, I will weigh normally, because the fiber is then lost. No fiber in your intestines means there is nothing holding on to mass in the intestines, and then you actually weigh a lot less the next day, allowing you to load more of carbs without getting over the weight limit. Of course, we have to do some groceries. The banana is for the loading, which you're going to see later. Get some vegetables like asparagus and mushrooms, just to have it to be sure, because um, on this day itself and on the next day before the weigh-ins, I didn't have any vegetables. As I mentioned, the fiber content is just too high. And when the fiber content is high, you will simply hold on to too much mass, which is useless when you want to weigh in as a classic competitor. For people who don't know, I'm allowed to weigh 112.9 kilos or 249 pounds. And when you weigh up uh, a couple of pounds or kilos below that, you can actually weigh in um, uh, you can actually gain some weight by the carbs without having to worry about the carb load. So here, I was already making my post-workout meal. Simple rice flour, which I'm going to put in right here, about 90 grams, which is always the basis of my carbohydrate meals that I have throughout the entire prep. So the rice flour or simple rice has been the only carb source along with a bit of uh, fruits, such as strawberries. Also drinking a lot of water here, at least 10 liters um, starting the Monday before the show to make sure my body flushes out any extra water so you don't hold on to anything. Then we went to the gym, Titan Fitness in Alicante. Simply did a back workout at about 60% intensity. And I chose movements that really suit my 
uh, regular workout style very well. So what I like to do at my gym, I pick those you know, likable exercises that look like those movements in this gym as well. Of course, I have a lot of machines in this gym, which I don't have in my gym. I use a lot of cables and benches to do all of my back work in the seated row, for example. Here they have hammer strength equipment, but it's all about trying to hit the same target muscle, such as either the lats, the lower lats, or the traps, or the rear delts. So we started out with a high row on the, on the hammer strength to re hit the lats. Um, and then we are hitting the lower part in the Christmas tree with this um, very nice low row, which it feel, feels very good in the lower lats. You can really get a very good contraction there. But none of the movements were anything close to failure. At least three reps in reserve, and also the volume went down from three working sets to two working sets per movement. This is really just to stimulate the muscle so the muscle doesn't forget to stay intact and nice and full, filled with blood, of course. But it's really literally to get the blood flowing and to kind of wake up from a flight. We all know when you're flying for a while, even if it's just two or three hours, you just feel kind of broken after that flight. And the only true way to get back to your regular rhythm and feeling is to just get a workout in. Especially as a bodybuilder, you are, you are built to work out, your muscles are built to work out. So once you, you know, put your body through what it's built for, you will actually feel a lot better. And here I'm very happy with the conditioning, by the way. The conditioning is, uh, is very good here. Mind you, I'm pretty flat. And this day I weighed in at 110.5 kilos, I believe, which is pretty low for me. But uh, still, you know, I do say that I'm flat, but I also recognize that a lot of people might think this is very full. But I felt very, you know, kind of empty and fatigued because I've been following a very low carb diet for a while. Yes, my coach, Stefan Kienzel, did give me some high days here and there, but you know, the most important thing is the weigh-ins is at 7 p.m. the next day, which means at night. So then you really gotta look out with your weight. Even though they added 900 grams to my weight limit, it's still always a danger if you just go load up on food and not think about it and not make weight. And some people didn't actually make weight, but you might see that a little later. Ah, uh, that's an interesting story, which it always is. So the last real back movement was for the traps. Normally this will be a chest supported movement, but the most important thing if you want to train the back thickness of the traps, which a lot of people ask me about, is that you want to be able to pull back the shoulder blades and contract the traps very hard, and that way you can truly maximize the growth of the back thickness. Afterwards, after that movement, we went on to a rear delt movement, which is these face pulls. I haven't done those in quite a while, but you can also see this gym is pretty busy. So whenever I see movement that I'm used to, that I recognize, I simply do it if it does fit in my workout routine. Normally, I would have done reverse uh, peg deck, so, you know, uh, uh, rope uh, reverse. Face pool really works the delts as well. And then some bicep movements, just to figure out a little bit which bicep movements I could do here. And you know, when you have a cable, when you're uh, honking the cable station, you might as well keep using it. So I just use, a, for every bicep movement, single bicep curls. So first we have a curl like this to really get the bicep blood flowing. But you know, not a lot of volume here at all. Mostly one working set per movement, just to get a good feeling in the bicep. I always think, as a classical C competitor, that having great arms is a great tool to have. Um, especially for someone who's tall and who doesn't have like a wasp waist, who simply needs some big extremities, which the arms play a very big role in. And Arnold still is my idol in classic bodybuilding. So having big arms is something I always strive to have. So even towards the very end, I like to put plenty of effort into my arms to get a lot of blood in there to tell those muscle cells, hey, 
the next time we're gonna have carbs go here fill this muscle up make this a priority then the last movement of the day was some uh, dumbbell hammer or curls which is always a great one as you can see in between the tricep and the bicep you can see the brachialis muscle which this movement really works so if you want wider biceps from the front view when you're doing for example a front relaxed or even a back double bicep if you want a 3d arm look having thick brachialis muscles is very important in my opinion and that really uh, goes well with some classic poses like the mantis pose or the side chest mantis pose very well too and you can see that the veins are <laughs> very much showing and then my lower back was bothering me a little bit but it's not the lower back itself it's actually the, uh, the glutes being tight so i actually stretch out the glutes a little bit because when the glutes are stretched then it actually uh, you know, releases the lower back a little bit as well. Then we went back to the apartment. It's just a 15 minute drive to the gym from where the apartment is. And then I already always prepare my post-workout meal before going to the gym. That way it can stiffen up a little bit, become more voluminous in the fridge. So I first prepare it with boiling water and then I put it in a microwave and then I put it in the fridge to create the maximum volume then adding some strawberries and designer whey and enjoying that meal. Now the last meal of that day was very simple, some beautiful salmon which I have at home but the vegetables were very simple and just some cucumber to minimize the amount of fiber. And then this is the next day and we start the day off by going to Titan Fitness again to my coach right here, Stefan Kienzel. This was pretty early in the morning around um, 8 o'clock. Uh, before eating anything, the only thing I had right now was some water, some glutamine, some base powder by ESN, which is basically magnesium, potassium, and sodium, to really get the, the blood pressure and all the minerals in balance in the blood. And that was, of course, Nathan the Asha, which is also a client of Stefan, which already, who already won the Flex Weekend Pro in Italy. And I think he's going to win uh, the European Pro as well. So it's awesome to have him as a teammate together with Stefan. So what I'm doing here is I thought I was going to train first because normally in my peak week plan, the first loading day, I always get a nice, simple, light workout in to uh, you know, open up the cells basically for the carbohydrates. But in the end, as you can see here, I was starting uh, a chest movement. But in the end, Stefan told me, you are more than flat enough, you've done enough, you've done enough activity, you're light enough, so you don't need to do extra activity anymore, let's just start the carb up, which of course is something that I love to hear. And of course I'm wearing my old school golden era tank top, fully stocked up at VintageGenetics.com, also available in t-shirts and also in white and black, both in t-shirt and tanked up version so check them out at the golden era collection link down below so i was just doing some hammer strength um, chest presses to get a little bit of blood in the muscle before starting the posing session for my coach which i will doing which i'll be doing in just a minute the only thing that i truly need for a good pump is uh normally just push-ups or when a machine like this is available, which is usually the case at like backstage at the Arnold Classic or the Mr. Olympia. I like doing this machine, getting blood in the arms, the triceps, the shoulders and the chest. And that's more than enough for me to get a nice, you know, warm feeling in my body and a nice pump as well. And then it is time as my coach is watching me, telling me, hey, let's see the shape. And I'm talking right here to David Hoffman. He has been doing the Olympia a couple of times as well. We placed very close to each other at the Olympia before, which was awesome, but now he kind of retired from bodybuilding, but still very active and passionate about the sport. So here I'm doing some poses. Mind you, my weight here was 109.4, which means that the low fiber plan of the previous day really worked out. And so I did lose that kilo, which gives me extra space to load up for the evening because this day was the weigh-in day at 7 p.m. And right here it's about 8.30 a.m. So I have plenty of time for some meals to go in. But here, my coach and myself, honestly, as well, were very happy with the shape and how things were literally shaping up to be. So this is pretty much 
you know, the, the worst that I can be if you know, the loading doesn't mess up because this is the flattest, you know, I, I was the entire prep, the lowest weight I've been the entire prep. And I'm very happy with the progress in the legs. As you can see, the hamstrings, the glutes are in. And of course, the fullness in the back, uh, the shoulders and the arms are still very much there, which I'm very, very happy about. And I always tell you guys, it's all about the um, the training. But actually, let's just let this play as my coach is giving me some instructions as well. Not a secret, at least me and I think a lot of other bodybuilders, we simply love peak week because we suffered, you know, not really suffered, but we still went very low carb, high cardio, high energy output, low energy input uh, for a very long time, for weeks and months. So being able to actually eat some carbs, as you can see right there, is very important. So what I did is alternate between the rice flour meals and uh, regular rice meals and both meals also contain other carb sources the rice flour meals contain some banana and a little bit of whey and of course the fats in the form of calabout dark chocolate 80 percent and the regular rice meals they contain um, some dates actually 20 grams of dates and why do we eat bananas and dates because i didn't have any vegetables with these meals again to keep the weight low but when you don't have vegetables, what also don't you have? Micronutrients, such as potassium. What other carb sources do contain potassium? Bananas and dates. So that's what I was having throughout these meals as well, to keep the potassium levels up a little bit, but keeping the fiber and the volume down. Okay. So dates and bananas are nice, high volume. Uh, carb sources in terms of the amount of carb within a smaller amount of volume, but also a high volume a potassium source without having to add like 200 grams of the zucchini, for example. So I was really alternating between those meals. In total, I did, that day I had eight meals like that, alternating between them, which was very nice and enjoyable to have, and also use some peanut butter on the rice meals as well. And then it was also time to get some tanning on my skin of course you can see the difference between one leg and the other my girlfriend is the one doing the tanning for me which i'm always very thankful for because the line for the tanning at the european pro was unbelievably long the queue it was like you had to wait one and a half hours before it was your turn so having my own girlfriend do the tanning for me which she's always a professional at she actually did it 
for, for years in the Netherlands at all the amateur shows, so she's very much used to doing this. So then I put, uh, then I had put one layer of tanning on already on a Friday for a Sunday show. Some people are wondering why are you doing this, so I can let the first layer really suck into my, soak into my skin, because a lot of people thought that was my actual natural tan, so it looked really good. And right now, here, this is the registration at the venue, the European Pro talking to some people and ultimately weighing myself in at 112.5 kilos with clothes on so that was very good news it does mean i gained some quality muscle weight and after that i just had my meal right away always take an extra meal with you when going to the registration because it was supposed to be at 7 uh, PM and I didn't leave until 8.30 so you don't want to be there without water without food so I immediately had a good golden rice meal with the dates the chicken the peanut butter a bit of salt and of course the golden turmeric and uh, also had 750 mils of water today is still a high day of water of 10 liters and then the registration was done and it's always nice to, to get all those booties at the registration and it feels professional and I really love this organization for treating the athletes very, very well. But I was very happy gaining, um, you know, I mean, being able to go through the weigh-ins. Here's again my coach talking about the final steps of the plan. And this is Ban Chao for those of you who do not know very known, well-known coach on the Fuad Abiyad podcast. And, and then when I got home, it's time for another loading meal because now I know I made weight. Let's load without restrictions. But it still was still the same meal. However, the last minute of the day did contain a bit more fats to ensure uh, you know, that the actually carbs stick to the body. And don't forget to stay golden.